Mike is working? Ah, now it's working, good. Thank you, everybody, please stand up. We all had a long day, so we all deserve some stretching. So please, everybody, put your hands together and stretch forward. Oh! And let me hear you. Oh! And up. Oh! And Wainchuk to the left. Oh! And Orenchuk to the right. Oh! And back. Oh! And forward. Oh! And clap it out. And now listen closely, turn to your neighbor, give him or her a high ten and say, I love TEDx. I love TEDx. And have a seat, everybody. Please have a seat. Thank you all very much. Excuse me for a second. That doesn't work. Ah, oops. Okay. Oh. Well, so much about technology. Well, first thing that I want to do here, I want to thank you all for being here today. There's actually a saying in Korean that goes, Chijaki Banida. <laughs> Can anybody tell me what Chijaki Banida means in English? Does anybody know? Chijaki Banida, what do you think? Yes. Chijaki Banida. Does anybody know? How about you? Nobody knows. <laughs> well, in English, it kind of means like when you take the first step, you're already 50% or Oshi Puro there. Right? So, can you all please do me a little favor? Can you all please show me your right hand? Everybody, please. And please pat yourself on the back and say, Congratulations for starting. And I'll reach over and pat both your neighbors on the back and say, Congratulations for starting. <laughs> Today, I'm going to make sure that this speech will very much be worth your time, right? The thing that I'm going to focus here on today is how you can visually present your idea. Many people today here, they're talking about their ideas and how you can create an idea. But you know, to really get your idea out into the world, you also must be really good at presenting it. So I'll give you a couple of tips on how to do that, right? What I usually do, oops. This one doesn't want to follow me today. I also don't know why. Ah, here we go. Usually I do training and consulting in the areas of presentation, innovation, and also train the trainer. Right? And I often do that also for lots of big corporations like the one you can see over here. And what I've noticed over the years by training those companies is that even though they're in completely different industries, they all have the same presentation problems. Right? Many times I train frontline people, sometimes CEOs and everything in between. But interestingly, they all have the same type of presentation problems. Right? And that's exactly what I'm going to focus on a little bit here today. Has anybody in here ever sat in a boring presentation? Quick show of hands. Has anybody only sat in exciting presentations? Probably not, right? Many of the presentations that we see are very, very boring. And they have many of the same type of problems. Right? They're boring. They have bad slides. The presenter just delivers everything in a very bad way. And often also the preparation is not very, very good. Right? And in general, you don't want to be there. You know, you're sitting there like, ah, when is the time up? I have to go home. But that's exactly what, what most people feel. Right? And the problem is with all those problems is when you're not a good presenter and when you don't present your ideas in the best way, you're very non-persuasive. You cannot persuade the people you're presenting to very, very well. And the challenge is that often that non-persuasion leads to no action. So imagine you have a great idea and you present your idea, but the people you're presenting to, they don't do anything about it. 
It's not a good thing, is it? Right? If no action comes afterwards. Right? You basically, what you do is you kill your own ideas. We all don't want to do that, but we often do that when we make those presentation mistakes. Right? We kill our own ideas. So what you want to do instead, of course, you want to become a better presenter. Because often what happens is people have an idea, sometimes create a product. But I tell you something, if you cannot present your ideas well, often you cannot create the product or service or company that you want to create. Right? And the same thing is true when you finally created the business or the product or your service, if you cannot present well, it cannot make you any money. Right? So you need presentation. It's a really essential skill for your ideas to become famous and become successful at the same time. Right? And what I'm going to t uh, share with you here today, I'm going to share three things with you that you can use to make your presentations far more effective in a visual way, but especially in ways of persuading your audience. Right? Tip number one, first of all. Right? Oh, one thing that I want to share with you quickly too. Um, the tips today are useful for all types of presentations. So it doesn't matter if you're presenting to two people, to 20, to 200, or even to 2,000. But you can use them to make your presentations more interesting, more exciting, and more persuasive in the end. Yeah, so let's have a look at all those tips together. First of all, tip number one. What does it say, please? All together one time, please. Thank you all very, very much. Slides. Who in here uses PowerPoint or Keynote when you give a presentation? Quick show of hands. Thank you. What I've noticed interestingly with all my business clients is that even though slides are getting better and better, most people still create terrible slides. Today is kind of the exception. You know, you see a lot of great speakers, great presenters whose slides are pretty good. Also because they have a very good slide creation team over here. Right? But most people don't have great slides. And I want to give you a very quick example here that you can follow me with. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to create two slides. Slide number one and slide number two, right now, right here. And what I want you to do, I want you to watch me while I do it. And afterwards, I want you to decide which slide is the better one. Are you ready? OK, watch me and check the time. The time is very important. Slide number one, go. Finished. Slide number one. Slide number two, please watch me closely. Finished. Now the Shipok question, which slide do you prefer? And I hope you in the back can also see this and you up there too. Who prefers this slide? Imagine there would be more words. Thank you. One gentleman in the back. <laughs> Who prefers this slide? Quick show of hands. Sir in the back, quick test for you. <laughs> How about now? Which one do you prefer? <laughs> this one? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the same thing often happens in when I do workshops or so. There's always one or two people who say, ah, I want the one with lots of text. But then you add the one word to it, and they're happy. Yeah? Let's have a look at a couple of other examples here. Which slides do you prefer? Slide number one, the importance of presentations. I know you're saying now, nobody's using those slides anymore. Trust me, if you saw my business clients, you wouldn't be laughing now. I guarantee you, this slide or this slide? Who prefers this slide? Who prefers this slide? I didn't even have to ask. That's interesting, too. Or imagine, for example, you're presenting about a product that you created or your own business. Here I just want to share with you quickly um, an example of one of my clients about LCD TVs. You know, could come up with all the stats, all the facts, all the details. Or 
the world's thinnest LCD screen. Who would choose the first slide? Who would prefer the second one? Again, when you, when you present your own business, you want to have a little bit of a balance of both. You want to have good visuals, but you also want to show facts, but in a more simplified way. Yeah, but first, first of all, keep in mind, keep your slides simple. Because a picture is worth a thousand words. And you want to be very persuasive with that. So that's tip number one. Make your slides more attractive using visuals. Tip number two. What does it say, please? Props. What is a prop? Can anybody tell me what this is? An apple, right? I have a big question for you now. I actually brought not one apple, but three apples. Which apple do you prefer? The apple on the slide there, this apple, in case you cannot see it in the back, it's an apple on a picture, or this apple? Who would prefer the third one? Almost everybody. Why do we prefer it? I heard from somebody, because it is the real thing. Right? A prop is the real thing. You know, for example, before we heard a wonderful presentation about your fashion business, right? She could have brought some fashion items on stage that she's usually promoting. You know, show a couple of props that people would also be interested in. Right? Props really increase the interest of an audience. Now, that's not the newest idea here, right? It's used by Steve Jobs. Whenever you see Steve presenting, he always pulls out his newest magic, powerful Apple item. Right? Steve Jobs does that. Who else does that? TED speakers do it. Right? Like, I don't know if you saw Jill Balter Taylor, but she was talking about the brain. And she brought a real brain on stage. She put her gloves on, picks up the brain carefully, and then explains the brain. Was that effective? Of course. Much better than if she just had a picture of a brain on the slides. Right? So again, you want to have slides, but you also want to have props. Bring the real thing with you. That is tip number two. One of my own clients, Ulf Egerstrand, he's a financial coach. He always pulls out money whenever he's presenting. He's talking about money. He might as well use it. Right? Use props to be more persuasive when you're presenting. That's another tip. In our workshops, we also always use props and clients' props when they're presenting, actually. Because props really, really, really increase interest. So use them. Use as many things, actually, as possible that you can. That's tip number two. Tip number three, what does it say, please? Thank you, experience. What do I mean by experience? Let's go back to the apple. Number one, I told you about the slides, the apple on the slides. Number two, a prop. It could be the picture or even the real thing. Okay, tip number three. Do you like apples? Have a bite. Do you like apples? Have a bite. Please. Try right now. I washed it. Don't worry. <laughs> I washed my own hands first, and then I washed the apple, and then in the plastic bag. Tastes good? Yeah? Okay, which one do you think is the most important one? Slides, the apple as a prop, or me giving them a chance to taste it? The last one, the experience of tasting and trying the apple, is the strongest and maybe most persuasive one. So in your presentation, and I strongly and firmly believe, the next level of really great presenters will be using lots of experiences with their audiences. I asked you earlier, remember, to stretch, to pat yourself on the back, etc. Those are all experiences. Also, your own product, you can use and give it out when you're presenting about it, right? So those are a couple of things. In our workshops, of course, as trainers, we always use experiences, exercises, things to do so people can participate. 
But now it has to go not only that trainers do it, but presenters as well. You know, let the audience do what you want them to do. And I actually want to do one little exercise here with you right now that I've learned a couple of years ago. I think about seven years ago, I went to a very, very boring financial conference in Vancouver, Canada. You know where everybody's dressed up with tie, looks very official, all the speakers are super official, everything is official, everything is full with numbers, very boring, eight hours a day. But then there came this one gentleman, a stockbroker, came on stage and said, okay, I, before I tell you what I'm going to talk about today, let's do a little exercise. And the exercise was called Follow the Leader. And the thing that you basically had to do, you had to point your thumbs up or down. He would bring up a stock, a real stock, on the slides and would ask us, you have to decide if the stock will go up or down. And he would show over time and we had to make a decision, either pointing the thumb up or pointing it down. And the ones who were right, they would stand. The ones who were wrong have to sit down. So instead of explaining you the game right now, I want to do it with you. So everybody, please stand up. This is our stock, our starting point. Now everybody, please pull out your thumb, everybody, and make a decision. Do you believe this stock, will it go up or down? Okay, decide now, three, two, one, decide. This stock goes up. Everybody who pointed down, sit down. Take a seat, who pointed down. Good, make your decision again, up or down. Decide now. Up. Everybody who pointed down, take a seat, please. Thank you. And make your decision again, up or down, now. And it went down. Everyone who pointed up, have a seat. Thank you very much. And again, make your decision now. And it went up. Everyone who pointed down, have a seat. And make your decision again. And it went up again. If you point it down, have a seat. And make your decision now. And up again. Who pointed down, please take a seat. We have one, two, three people still standing. Who's going to be the winner? Let's check. OK, the three of you, make your decision now. And down. Have a seat if you were wrong. We have our guru! Give her a hand! She is who? She is our financial expert. His point was very simple. You are responsible for your money. Don't blame some expert who doesn't know better than you. Because often when we pick people, we give them full responsibility, but all they actually do when they choose stocks, oh, maybe go up, maybe down, they don't know for sure. He wants to make clear you are responsible for your money. This is another example of having an experience for your audience. Right? And ultimately, the message that I want to take you with here. First of all, did you have a good time? Quick show of hands. Jimmy Sawyer. Happy to you. I hope you also learned a lot. I want you to keep in mind that slide props and experiences will make your presentation far more persuasive. And most importantly, they will make your ideas shine. Thank you very much. Thank you.